guys, welcome back to My Singing Monsters. The day you've all been waiting for is finally here. It is time to revive all of the Celestials. In the last week, I spent over 5,000 diamonds and countless hours breeding in order to make this video happen. So I would really appreciate it if you could show me some love for my hard work by just hitting that like button. Thank you. So obviously right now this island is a little bit quiet. I've only ever revived one Celestial and right now that one is muted. But we're gonna go through these guys one at a time and we'll start with the one I already have. All right, I unmuted him. Let's take a listen and then I'll read the description. I think this is a pretty cool little monster, guys, because of the fact that uh, he's got two different sounds. He's got vocals and a guitar. What the heck? Most people, when they play air guitar, don't sound quite as good. Atmos. The Atmos has long dreamt of strumming the strings of a physical instrument like its celestial cousin, Scarotar. Who the heck is that, man? I don't know who that is. Unfortunately, this virtuoso suffers from a lack of binocular depth perception, making fine motor skills a challenge. Remaining as flexible and fluid as air, this one-eyed wonder has risen above its limitations and adapted an instrument that harnesses the very essence of the element it reigns over. The air celestial's strength in the face of adversity has made it a symbol of perseverance for all air elementals. Wow. So this guy reigns over the element of air. Huh, I didn't realize that was how this stuff works. So does each, does each monster here reign over a different element? Now, like I said, guys, I spent a lot of diamonds and a lot of time in order to revive all these guys today because if you look in the inventories, it gets kind of ridiculous. That's 40 mammoths. Trust me, it gets even worse, okay? But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and revive, uh, what's the name of this thing? It says Buffy, but it's a uh, Glacier. Well, this guy probably reigns over the element of cold. That'll be my guess. Woo! What? I didn't think it was gonna look like that, guys. But that's right. Oh. Okay. So this, is this guy gonna have two things he does as well? Is every monster here, oh God, don't, don't show me this. I don't wanna see it. Is every monster here gonna have two sounds? Play me off, Johnny. Oh. <laughs> I like it. Bro. I, what? Not again. Oh no. Guys, this better not be like the Wublin video where I get booted back to the main menu like a dozen times. Please. Okay, so far guys, we got a guy on a guitar with vocals. We got a guy on a uh, ice, punching ice, and he's got vocals. I'm seeing a little bit of a trend, and I like it. I haven't heard any of these monsters before, except obviously Atmos, okay? So uh, it's gonna be a real adventure for me. Glacier's Rebirth has given it a perspective on life that is as new and bright as freshly fallen snow. The cheerfully chill Celestial is embracing its newfound joie de vivre by taking up a creative hobby. Snow sculpture! Many of this frosty giant's uh, ooves are meticulously sculpted in the image of the cold elementals who revere it. But these monster pieces do not last long. Once a sculpture is complete, it is then toppled and molded anew, representing an eternal circle of life. Wow, how beautiful. Don't mind me, I'm just jamming, man. This guy, this guy is a bop, okay? Next up, guys, we're gonna go for Julius. He is a syncopite, but unfortunately, I have not finished filling his inventory because I ran out of diamonds. I need two shell beats and it would cost me 80 diamonds to just go ahead and do that. I only got 30 left, so now I gotta go to the store and buy more. All right, we got some more diamonds. That should be enough, okay? We only need like a handful more. We just need the 80 for this guy and a little bit more for two others. So fill it up and revive it. That looks nothing like I thought it would, man. What the heck? I like the color though, it's a nice green. Yeah, I think that's percussion guys, but I want him to sing as well, okay? And don't show me that! It's great that we got a sha bum bum and a Rudy too, but what What about the rock guy? He's got a mouth. Use it. Use your mouth. No! Okay. So, I'm pretty sure Julius doesn't have any vocals. Oh, I was excited for like, 
a dozen vocal monsters, you know? Okay, all right. Syncopite is a diamond in the rough, unpolished and unrefined, yet glistening with an immense potential concealed inside its crude frame. The rugged celestial has a surprisingly magnetic personality capable of uniting its fellow monsters and forging rock-solid friendships. Unfortunately, this inherent magnetism can be troublesome for the mineralized monster whose thoughts are frequently interrupted by the sudden collision of stones against its crystalline cranium. Well, no wonder he can't sing. His brain's turning into mush. All right, guys, starting to sound pretty good. I can only imagine how good it's gonna sound by the end. Who's next? Egon. I remember, okay? I remember this guy's name because I put a lot of stuff into him. How much stuff did I put into this guy? 16 pot belly, 70 noggins, 25 toe jammers, 25 mammoth, 12 drumplers, 35 ma, four T-Rocks, two pummel, we're not done! Eight shrub, 15 octopus, seven fur corn, 20 flogs, two clambles, three bogarts, five entbrat, and a partridge in a pear tree! Wake up. What the heck? I... So far, these things look... Oh, my. So far, these things look cooler than I thought they would, okay? But just not what I expected at all. So, this one's a vocal monster anyway, guys. So that's, uh, three out of four that... Like the plasma element it represents, the pudgy Plixis cranium contains a viscous ooze that floats and sways hypnotically within its container. While the joy of revival has made this buzzy celestial a bit of a party monster, its head's passing resemblance to a lava lamp should be disregarded. But please, if its plexi glass cap falls off while head bopping to its favorite tune, help scoop the goop. Scoop the goop, y'all. It's very important to scoop the goop. All right. I do be jamming, though, folks. Next up, a little monster called... Uh, Skeritar. Oh, the Skeritar. Oh, I've heard about this guy. Uh, just curious, guys, how much I had to put into him. And guess what? It was a whole bunch. Wake up, Cal Nude. What kind of a name is Cal Nude, by the way? Well, you look like you should, man. You don't look that surprising. Oh. Oh. Oh! Okay, so this guy plays this instrument, but I don't know what it is. But those are, I think, scarab beetles, which makes sense. While Scaritar may reign over the element of poison, the serene celestial wouldn't hurt a humbug. The only thing that this pacifist prods with its surprisingly venomous forelegs is its instrument whose harmonious sound echoes throughout the monster world like an antidote coursing through the body. Despite its tranquil nature, it's certainly wise not to sneak up on a Scaritar. If it pricks you by surprise, you may be left with an embarrassing case of Tweedlepox. So it's carrying disease, huh? Great. Another non-vocal monster, guys. I mean, it's it's an okay little thing. I don't know how to feel about the design of this one, guys. I, I gotta say, it's a little bit weird, don't you think? Like, the color scheme and everything? Huh. Next up, guys, we've got Coral the Hornicle. A Hornicle. This is what I had to put into this one. Quite a lot of stuff. I mean, 50 toe jammers. Revive it. <laughs> He's adorable, man. Look at this little guy. Oh, and he sounds great too, guys. He sounds like a whole band or something. Yo, that's a good stuff, bro. So he's several horns, I guess. That kind of makes sense. He's a he's a he's a barnacle who plays horns. And may I may I say that he plays them quite well. And that little jump as well. And you know, I this is good. Woo! Dancing around, man. Having a great time. This guy gets the Maché seal of approval. Very cool. The reborn Hornicle boasts two barnacle-encrusted legs, unlike its conspicuously peg-legged form of yore. Water elementals revel in exchanging tales at sea of how the celestial lost its leg. A tangle with an aquatic beast, an unbreakable curse, only the deep sea dweller itself knows the truth. Not that it will ever share its story, of course, it's much too embarrassing. Next up, guys, we've got Skeleton the Vamp. 
I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. It kind of looks like a really basic organ. This guy required 40 noggins, 50 toe jammers, 35 mammoths, and a bunch of other stuff. Like, it was hell, okay? <laughs> oh, this looks familiar. Oh, this guy's got like a, a 3D effect. Damn, bro. Not bad, not bad. Nice little tune, not too offensive, you know? I don't know what kind of instrument this is though, guys. It, it looks like a cross between a foosball table and some sort of messed up piano organ thing. There's nothing like a good tune-up for the Mech Celestial. Vamp's revival was like a cosmic car wash, removing centuries of rust and rubble to unveil a shining new monster beneath. Moving and shaking like a well-oiled machine, Vamp now spends its days making repairs to the broken down island it calls home, collecting shiny scraps all the while. Oh yeah, well that's cool, good, good for you. All right guys, seven down and five to go. Next up is Quarter Vine, the Blasoom. I don't know if that's like a bassoon or something. This one wasn't too bad, guys. There was only one double digit monster in here and that was Potbelly. Not the end of the world. Okay. That's about what I thought it would look like, but what is it? Yeah, it sounds like a bassoon if I've ever heard one, which I'm not sure if I have. Oh, it goes along with this guy over here, huh? Oh. Not bad, not bad. The Blasoom has emerged from its ancient shell like a flower blossoming in the early days of spring, feeling refreshed and vibrantly alive. A surprising development in the Celestial's renewal was the disappearance of one of its elegantly oaky legs. While countless botanists and horticulturalists of the plant element have researched this loss of limb, the biological explanation behind its late leg growth remains elusive. The Blasoom appears undeterred, however, happily hopping from place to place. Why do you think it's gonna make biological sense? It's Celestial Island, dude. Like, you're literally bringing monsters back to life, but Sure, it's the leg that's unexplainable. Now this guy looks kind of cool, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure he's gonna play a couple of uh, bongos or something. Hmm. Uh, Yarson is a tort. Like a like uh, it looks like some sort of turtle or a Koopa from Mario. Revive it. Oh wait, I was gonna check and see how many things I needed to put in there. Oh, he's really cute. Okay. Man, this guy is like. Donna Fire levels of adorable, guys. And he's only got one bongo now? Oh. Yup. It feels like there's like a drop coming or something now, doesn't it? Oh. Well, I wasn't expecting that, guys. I thought he only had one instrument, but he has two instruments. He has a little symbol on his back. And then... Uh, the little, the little drum. He's even kicking a foot, guys. Oh my god. This guy got the moves. Oh! Snap. What a monster, man. What a monster. Matt Shea, seal of approval on this one, guys. Tort is the rock that all Earth elementals lean on. Dependable, unwavering, and grounded. The steady beat of its drum actively defies the laws of physics, resonating throughout the monster world and within each Earth elemental, regardless of distance or acoustics. I feel like that would be a little bit annoying. This enduring rhythm has been harnessed by the monsters for many surprising purposes, including lulling rambunctious young monsters to sleep. Okay, here's the inventory since I forgot about this one and uh, it wasn't that bad except for the 50 noggins. Okay, third last monster, B Bo Botias? Botias the Ludwig. This one wasn't terrible. Well, it was kind of terrible, like 30 toe jammers, 25 mammoths, 15 ma, anyway, it's done, okay? It's all good. Wow, <laughs> so he looks exactly like the, the, the big version except smaller. Oh, oh, I already hear this guys and I like it. Okay. Yeah, I got some piano going here, bro. This is a, I, I like the look of this monster as well, guys. Okay. I think this might be my third seal of approval. Is this guy playing a set of teeth with braces on him? 
Certainly looks like it. I never really question what exactly this guy is, but the longer I look, the more confused I am. Please, tell me more. Ludwig's skeletal visage may suggest it lacks a pulse, but take the time to revive it and you will find that the Celestial of Shadow is very much alive. This peculiar pianist is a role model for all startling shadow elementals that feel misunderstood by their peers. Though Ludwig's appearance may chill onlookers to the bone, inside lies a creative soul capable of elegant self-expression through the gentlest caress of its keys. Sadly, the occasional mood swing can lead the adolescent celestial to be a little forceful with its keyboard, hence the braces. Oh, okay. Well, that, that it all makes sense now, guys. I guess this guy plays on teeth because he's some sort of like skeletal monster thing. Okay. All right, second last monster, guys. Heartbeat the Furnas. Here's the inventory. A lot of different monsters, but nothing too crazy. So, uh, revive it. Boom! Oh, what the, the heck? I mean, I know some people go through like an awkward, you know, adolescent phase, but damn, dude. Damn! Okay, we got more percussion. But is that it? You never know with the Celestials, guys. Sometimes they start uh, making other sounds you didn't even know they could make. Or they or they just do this. That's a, that's a thing, too. This would've been a really great opportunity for this guy's like uh, oven door to just open and close for a little extra noise. You know, that would've been fun. But it's cool, it's cool. Now, guys, we have arrived at the last Celestial, but it's not just the last Celestial, it's also the most evil of them all. So this is Tronic, and Tronic is a Galvana. And take a look at Galvana's inventory. I don't even wanna look, I'm not even gonna look, you look. Here, I, uh, 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 th there, there you go. You can, you go ahead and look for yourself. I don't wanna see that again. I don't wanna look at that. You think I wanna look at this? I don't wanna look at that. It hurts. Okay, so many monsters in here, man. And the only one I got left now is one shell beat. So there you go. Welcome back to the monster world. How you feeling? You, you small. Well, it's kind of cute, guys. It's kind of cute. Okay. Wait, are you singing that? I think. I think that's what's happening here. Okay, it's all right, guys. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think it adds too much to the song. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you noticed, guys, but I uh, forgot to read this guy's description. Okay, so I gotta do that now. Upon its revival, Furnas sensed that the once bright flame of the fire element had dimmed to a faint ember. The fiercely devoted celestial of fire recalled that even the tiniest of sparks can be reignited and began to drum diligently its resounding beat stoking the flames of hope within all fire elementals. With the fire element beginning to glow again, Furnas now stores the monster world's excess embers in its bakery-like tummy. It has rescued countless turkey dinners from burnt ends in the process. Oh, even the mightiest of celestials has to start somewhere. The revived Galvana enjoys its newfound freedom from age-old responsibilities blissfully unaware that its very own creations roam the monster world? Unshackled from the burdens of guardianship, Galvana instead releases its raw electrical energy through play, even toying with the very orb that contains its power. What? Who? Who is this? So, Galvana created other monsters? I, I, I'm unaware of the lore here, guys, but that's... That's what it sounds like, okay. All right guys, there you have it, the full Celestial Island experience. Now I already told you what my three favorite were, Hornicle, Tort, and Ludwig. And now I'm kind of curious, what if you just muted everything else? Some of these guys are really fun to put to sleep, guys, like this one here, look at that, boop. So, with just these three, my three favorite monsters, Actually sounds pretty good, guys. Especially when you get Tort in here with a little bit of that symbol, you know? Boom. And then, I just, I, only thing I don't like is I wish that uh, Hornicle kept going with his part and, you know, kept playing the horn. There's a lot of percussion in this song, guys, but I want just a little bit more, maybe, because I do actually kind of like this guy quite a bit as well. 
Okay, so let's wake him up and let him play in the song. Then we'll even have a little bit of vocals, okay? Okay, yeah, you know what? I like having this guy as part of it as well. It's a quartet. That's what we're keeping it at, guys. Four monsters, because who needs 12? Not me. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of My Singing Monsters. Thank you so much for enjoying, and if you want to enjoy another one of my videos, I've got just the thing right here.